honestly, the the thing about the the um, Daniels subplot in the Detroit episode, which was the last time we saw Daniels, Daniels didn't know jack shit about anything, and he couldn't tell Archer anything. And in this one, he brings him in and tells him everything that's going on in the future. He's like, Archer, there's these sphere builders, and they've created these spheres, and they're trying to play the Zindi off against you. You, this is a bad time. You're gonna, they're going to destroy the Federation. You're the only person who can do the Federation sort of thing. I, it drove me a little bit nutty because I hate the Temple Cold War and I really hate Daniels about how loosey goosey they are with this guy about what he knows when it needs to be revealed. And it's not even that he's <laughs> coy; it's just that he does not know things sometimes, and other times yeah. he 100 percent knows what's going on. It, it drives me a little bit nuts. Yeah, Daniels. The trouble with Daniels is that he has no. Um, agency other than what the writers need him to do in any given scene. So, like, there's no... When you get a scene like that we have in this one, there's nothing baked into it where Daniels is like, listen, I'm not supposed to, t- I'm not supposed to tell you this. If I tell you what happens in the future, it could destroy the space-time continuum or some shit. Yeah. You know, there's no... There's nothing to Daniels. Daniels is just a mouthpiece for exposition to explain how things link together and there, there's no so there's like no real tension built into well, his character because it like you're saying it changes every time he shows up sometimes he knows everything sometimes he doesn't know anything yeah sometimes he can't do things sometimes he can just pluck archer into the 400 years in the future yeah <laughs> yeah it's I, I think my problem with him is that when he reveals information there's no sense that he's playing a game greater than what archer is aware that he's right doing. It, he's just exactly. like, now, yeah. this is the episode I have to tell you that this stuff is happening, so here you go. It's not that he's been waiting for this moment, and you're like, oh, Daniel's playing the 40 chess on Archer over here. Like, right. this, this, yeah. this makes sense. There's, no, yeah. there's nothing interesting to him to make anybody watching this go, maybe is he telling Archer the truth? Like, Archer's yeah. taking a lot on faith here. I mean, <laughs> like, he's been jumped... He's been jumped 400 years into the future. He's taken... Uh, time travel as a fact due to his experiences but still like why how does he know archer from i mean how does he know daniels from anybody right like what why does he trust anything that he says why how does he know they're on the fucking enterprise you know yeah yeah it's yeah. it's just like there's no he he takes uh after after he kind after archer kind of like accepts time travel all the tension in those scenes kind of go away because it's no longer like, you know, do we need, do I trust this guy? Is what he's telling me true? It's, it's, it's just sort of like, well, I don't like that. <laughs> I guess I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I, I want to blow him up. I came all this way. You tell me I got to talk to these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that I really did not, like I know that it's always been involved because Daniels, the reason that they're on this mission is because of the temporal cold war. I understand it's kind of baked into this. I really Mm -hmm. dislike the temporal cold war tying into this at this point. A it's giving Archer a Messiah complex without him actively taking it on, but he is now the the key cog in whatever happens. 